Last March 2021, I had COVID. I was so sick, bedridden, and unable to work for three weeks. During that time, I received a shipment of blonde duckies and pak chong. It was a back order from February during the FedEx shipment fiasco. It's good I already had my enclosure ready because when I received the package, I just opened it and dumped the icepot into the enclosure. Fast forward to July 2021. It's almost four months now and I had a surprising result using my substrate mix and care for this Asian cave dwelling isopods. So stay tuned and I will share it with you. Number 15, Blonde Rubber Duckies or Blondies and Pak Chong. Hello Isopod friends. Blonde Rubber Ducky and Pak Chong are both from Thailand. They were collected from a limestone caves. There is a lot of conflicting stories about Blondies that it is just a color morph of the OG Rubber Ducky and others claim that it's from a different locale. Someone even posted in the internet that it was discovered in the caves in Thailand that has been destroyed by some evil company so they can build there. That these poor duckies are now extinct in the wild and the hobby is somehow saving these cute, helpless little blondies from extinction. Anyways, Pak Chung is named from a region in Thailand where they were collected from. Let's talk taxonomy. Both Blondies and Pak Chong belong to family Armadillidae, which has an hourglass shaped talson. This family is the biggest family in suborder Onisidae. That includes Coberis, Merulanella, Armadillo, and Nesodillo. As for the genus and species, we don't know it yet. Now let's take a look on my two enclosures. First, on the blonde rubber ducky. As for care, cave dwelling Asian isopods prefer temperatures at around 65 to 75 degree Fahrenheit or 18 to 23 degree Celsius. Caves in Thailand tend to be a lot warmer than a lot of caves. It has to do with Thailand's climate. It's tropical and very humid. Thailand's caves can reach inside temperature of 70 degree Fahrenheit or 32 degree Celsius and above. With that being said, I place all my cave-dwelling Asian isopods in my basement, where the constant temperature is around 68 to 75 degree Fahrenheit year-round. For substrate, instead of using a regular organic potting soil, I use organic potting soil that contains bat guano, like fox farm, ocean forest, or happy frog. Then I mix this with sterilized deciduous leaves, sphagnum moss, coconut core, aspen snake bedding. And I pour a generous amount of RODI water to make the soil moist, not soggy, moist. Most cave dwelling Asian isopods prefer high humidity. This is very important. Most of the failure of newbies is they keep the soil bone dry. They can die of desiccations or drying out. And my last ingredient for my substrate is warm casting from my warm compost bin. Warm compost increase the beneficial microorganism in your substrate. 
These are microorganisms or microbes that are tiny single cell organisms like bacteria or fungi. This is giving them the extra heads up by adding beneficial bacteria in their substrate. This is how the beneficial microbes help the isopods. The bacteria is in their posterior end of the reproductive tract that helps them break down cellulose and toxic compounds in the leaf litter that they eat. The mankais and juvenile isopods also consume fecal material left by the adults. So they get most of the beneficial microbes too that gives them the bacteria in their gut as well as the nutrients released by the bacteria. That's why they eat poo. So that term is called copophagic. Now let's look into the Pak Chong enclosure. Unlike the blondie, which has almost all yellow orange body, the Pak Chong has a dark gray perion, and the head and pleon are orange in color, which looks like Duffy Duck. A lot of breeders say that Pak Chong is easier than the rubber ducky, meaning they reproduce faster. They both have the same care and same temperature and humidity requirements. For food, their basic nutrition should be in the substrate. Since they're cave-dwelling isopods, I gave them organic potting soil that has a bad guano. In the wild, especially in tropical countries like Thailand, caves are the main habitat of bats. So most likely, they eat bat poo or bat droppings. If you give them leaf litter, they will eat it too. I've noticed that they like occasional treats like zucchini, bok choy, and butternut squash. For their calcium source, I gave them calcium carbonate powder form. There's a lot of controversy regarding calcium source. Some breeders give limestones, others garden lime. The calcium carbonate powder form is easier in my opinion and I've been giving it to my OG rubber ducky since 2019 and they are thriving. To recap, I was supposed to do an unboxing video last March 2021 with these two species but I got COVID. I still check them once a week. Last week, I decided to check them again and I saw mankais or baby isopod. That's why I decided to do a new video, maybe to share what I think is the secret of my success. I still have my original 10 isopod in each enclosure that I purchased in March 2021. I always start with 10. And the good news is there's no casualties and they have been reproducing after just 4 months. The normal gestation period is about 40 to 50 days. So we can safely assume that around April or May, they started breeding. And it did not take them that long to get established. I think it's the combination of a moist substrate with bad guano and warm casting. Also, the constant temperature in my basement at around 68 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And most importantly, I don't bother them or check them every day. Or maybe I just gotten better with my husbandry skills. Anyways, I hope you learned something in this video. If you like something, please click the like button or subscribe. Thank you so much.